The sun dipped below the horizon as I stood at the edge of the Venetian waters, staring across the expanse toward the ominous silhouette of Pavelia Island. The chilling tales surrounding the island had always intrigued me, and tonight, armed with nothing but my curiosity and a dim lantern, I was determined to explore its haunting secrets. As the water taxi deposited me on the shores of Pavelia, an unsettling shiver ran down my spine. The air felt heavier, charged with an otherworldly energy that left me breathless. The moonlight cast eerie shadows over the decaying buildings that lay ahead, as if the very structures themselves were reluctant witnesses to the island's dark past. My steps were tentative as I crossed the overgrown path, the sound of my own footsteps echoing eerily in the stillness of the night. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that the island itself was aware of my presence. A cold breeze whispered through the trees, carrying with it whispers of forgotten torment. The island's history came rushing back to me as I ventured deeper into its heart. Pavelia had once been a place of refuge for those afflicted by the bubonic plague, a desolate quarantine for the sick and the dying. The ghostly cries of the suffering seemed to linger in the air, a mournful symphony of agony. My lantern's feeble light flickered as I reached the crumbling remains of the asylum that had stood as a testament to the island's darkest days. The building loomed before me like a spectral guardian, its broken windows and decaying walls exuding a malevolent aura. I hesitated for a moment, then pushed open the creaking door. The interior was a realm of darkness punctuated by the occasional glimmer of my lantern's light. Dust particles danced in the air, like phantoms caught in a never-ending waltz. The air was thick with the scent of decay, and every step I took seemed to echo off the walls with an unsettling resonance. As I moved through the asylum's labyrinthine corridors, I could swear I heard faint whispers that tugged at the edge of my consciousness. Unintelligible murmurs that seemed to be carried on the wind itself, as if the very walls had retained the tortured secrets of those who had suffered here. Suddenly, a shiver ran down my spine as a door at the end of the corridor swung open on its own accord. My heart raced as I cautiously approached, the beam of my lantern revealing a room that was unlike the others. The walls were adorned with crude drawings, each depicting scenes of agony, despair, and torment. A guttural moan echoed through the room, and my blood turned to ice as I realized that I was not alone. A shapeless, shadowy figure writhed on the floor, emitting tortured wails that seemed to pierce the very fabric of reality. I stumbled backward, my lantern falling from my grasp and plunging me into darkness. The room seemed to close in around me as the figure's cries grew louder, reverberating through the walls like a symphony of madness. Panic gripped me, and I fumbled to retrieve my lantern, my fingers trembling as I desperately sought the reassuring glow. With the lantern once again in my grasp, its light revealed an empty room. The shadowy figure had vanished, leaving only the haunting echoes of its suffering behind. Was it a manifestation of the island's tortured past, or had my own fear conjured it into existence? I knew then that I couldn't stay a moment longer. As I fled the asylum and the sinister presence that seemed to linger there, I couldn't shake the feeling that Pavelia had imprinted itself upon me, that the island's darkness had touched my very soul. As I left the island's shores, I cast one final glance back at Pavelia, its silhouette fading into the distance. The horrors that dwelled within its crumbling walls were far more real and malevolent than any tale could convey. Povelia's haunted legacy had taken hold of me, a reminder that some places are forever stained by the darkness of their past. 